Welcome to Kick-Ass Confidence for May. The focus is how to fast track your career success. Today I'm joined by a food technologist of 25 years, manager of 14 years and my big sis for life, Laura Classen. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So you're in an unusual area. Can you tell us a bit about food technology and how you got into it? Yeah, sure. Uh, look, it is one of those uh, areas where people sort of ask you exactly what is food technology when you do tell them what you do. Um, well, foods, it's a mixture of food science and a little bit of sort of cooking, I suppose. And, and um, so the role itself, um, I'm actually a product application support manager. And what that means is really is um, I work for a, a global company where they import a lot of ingredients, so healthy ingredients that go into pretty much all foods that you'll find in the supermarket. Um, and so my role is to incorporate the ingredients into a, a product. So I'll make up a new product concept using understanding the trends, the health and wellness trends that are in the market, whether it be global or local, and, and then go out to customers like the Nestle and Arnott's and present product that would be suitable for them and that makes sense for their products. So um, the way I sort of got myself into this career was when I was younger, I really enjoyed cooking and I liked chemistry. So um, I was told that those two sort of ended up as food science. So um, I made my way into that um, course and ended up, you know, um, down that path of my career. So, yeah, I loved every bit of it and uh, continue to do so. Yeah, nice. So I know you did the cheesy crust pizza and the cookies back in the day. Now are you doing things like gluten-free bread? Has it, have you really seen a trend in health? Oh, definitely, definitely. There's, um, there's every couple of months there's a new trend, so you sort of got to keep up with what's what's happening and um, – Definitely, gluten free has been on the on the rise for many years, and I've been on that journey in developing and improving on existing products with with clients. And so, uh, my previous sort of work that I've been doing for most of my working career is product development with the likes of Tip Top and Buttercup, which um, you know they've come a long way in developing not just mainstream wheat products. They're really doing a lot of work in the gluten-free, so supporting them, really understanding how, how to improve on existing products and, and you know, tr trying to tap into global research, what's happening globally, trying to incorporate that here into the Australian market. Yeah, there'd be a lot of pressure, I imagine. Uh, so is it a male or female-dominated area? And if so, what, what are the challenges? Um, yeah, look, obviously in my previous most of my previous uh, working career has been in bakery so that was 100% dominated by male so you know coming into the working uh, industry in in a bakery and male dominated um, environment was very difficult um, and also being um, obviously in my background is um, from a Lebanese background a female is typically quiet and shy and just not not really um, speak so mind. So I, being me, being a Capricorn and uh, second in the, the chain of, uh, of uh, where I sit in the family. So I was quite, I suppose, vocal when, when I had to. And I mean, it was not, it was out of my comfort zone, but I stood up to a lot of bakers where they saw me as a female and who do, you know, who do I, think I am to come and tell them what to do and, and improve on what they're doing and and you know obviously they've been doing it for so long that they feel like they don't want a female coming to tell them what to do but I mean I, th I think I stayed true to myself and and continued to do that and they saw that I was capable and I kept going and and yeah I've, I have uh, you know stayed close contact with most of those males after I've left you turned them <laughs> Yeah, they realise, they feel, either feel threatened. I think that was the key takeaway was as soon as I felt they feel threatened for their jobs, they see this female that's uh, got capability, has can speak her mind and, and communicate well to the management and, um, and is good at what I was doing. But I think I just had to reassure them that I'm not there to take their job, that I was just there to do a job and get paid for it. And um, I think... 
I won them over. Good. <laughs> Uh, so, speaking of your strengths, what would you say your two greatest personality weapons are and that, that have led you to be so successful at work? Yeah. Um, I think you sort of, it's always, for me, I, I find it hard to talk about all the, the positive stuff like probably most women. Um, you know, at, at some point, I think um, we've when I was working my earlier career was I was nominated for employer of the year from all my star, I mean, direct um, employees, um, other um, counterparts within the business and, and my manager. So there was a hundred odd staff within the business and I won the employer of the year. And some of the key sort of um, reasons why they voted me to, to win that particular um, employer of the year was that, I was dedicated to what I was asked to do and I had a can-do attitude. And I sort of look back at it and think um, definitely, I, I'm, you know, if, there, if I found that there was an, an answer to something that uh, I was working on, I would chase down every um, bit of information that, to make sure that I've evaluated everything and, it, and, it, uh, and I've tried everything before I said, no, I can't do it. So... Um, yeah, and trustworthy, I suppose. I was trustworthy that a task was given and it was um, going to be accomplished and that it, management never had to chase me down for it and it was always completed on time. Nice. And in all your time at work, what would be, say, your biggest challenge? Uh, challenge, mainly in a corporate environment, I felt managing up um, I had really great rapport with my direct reports and I still do to this day. Um, it was more managing up. So it's about then you lose the people side of it when you're trying to manage up because management want to cut costs and potentially cut heads and, and you're trying to justify why you need these people on board. And um, so it's this constant challenge trying to keep your staff happy and content and make sure that they're doing the right thing um, and ultimately, you know, you look good if they're doing their job. But um, I suppose at the end of the day it was about management. I'm in a management role, so I've got to support the business at the end of the day. So my challenge is really to, to you know, communicate up and, and still still be human up there with when I'm talking to them and, and letting them know, look, you know, that they're human as well. They're not just a number that we need to treat them you know, we want to keep your staff. We need to treat them like they, you know, they're human and they've got lives after work. So, I think that's my biggest challenge, and it, it will probably be that for forever if I'm in this role. So I can imagine that can be really tough because there's so much pressure coming down from the CEOs, and then I find that upper management tend to sit in their own offices sometimes and don't interact, and people feel intimidated by them. So they're I guess you're there to try to bridge that gap, which is a big challenge. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, sorry. So the greatest lesson from that experience? Yeah, look, I, I think my lesson is to to really still, still, still stay true to who, what I believe in, in terms of the people side. I think, I mean, a business can't run without people. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you need people and... If you've got unhappy people there, then they typically don't last. So for me, it's still, I'm, I'm, although I'm still corporate and still having to manage up, I think um, I try to keep it an even keel both sides. So, yeah, I mean, as much as I can, and, and I still tell biz, my management that what I believe and I'm, I'm open and honest as to my, my feelings. And, and, and I think at the end of the day, they... They like that about me because I'm open and honest and, and tell them, you know, that the people, um, this is who I am and I'm about people and, and they have to just accept it. Next question. You've interviewed many people for jobs. What's the key thing that you look for? Yeah, look, yeah, I've interviewed so many people over the years and um, whether it, regardless whether it was a male or a female, it was all about... Um, Understanding when they are talking and you've asked them questions um, about their, I suppose, their um, achievements throughout their career and it's hearing whether they talk about I or it's we as a team. So I look for people that really focus on team 
and not mm-hmm. it's me and I and I did this and I did that. So that for me is the golden rule for, for an interview. I've learnt my lesson and I've picked it up a few times where I've hired people along the way where it's about me, 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 and then you realise down the track when they've you've hired them and they're working for you and it's, it's all about them <laughs> and then you're trying to accomplish, um, you know, work within the, the team environment and, and then they say, well, it's not my job, it's someone else's job. And so key takeaways to understand if they understand they know and they know how to work in a team environment so mm. and, and honesty i think honesty comes with that as well so you could t- typically see them uh, if they're coming through as being honest and they're not talking bullshit really along the way <laughs> you, you've got the bullshit radar happening when you're interviewing so mm. yeah, yeah. that's good thank you so great tips honesty and being a team player uh, your deal breakers, I, I guess you've just mentioned when they're saying I and they don't come across as honest, is there like another deal breaker at all? Yeah, look, yeah, definitely. Um, I think um, I've picked up, especially chefs, <laughs> I've, I've, uh, you know, within the food science, we do have chefs come through where they have to do some product development as well for us. and. Um, I find ego, you, you see their ego just coming through so powerful and strong that, uh, wow. yeah, and that sort of goes hand in hand with I and, and the team thing I was talking about before, so, mm. yeah. Ego, chefs, it's such a stressful area of work as well. I don't envy chefs, <laughs> especially in restaurants like the busy, you know, five-star restaurant. Yeah, yeah, but they still can treat each other with respect. I think it's uh, a little bit overrated with the the crazy egos yeah mm, i agree it's great uh, makes great tv unfortunately um so finish this sentence resumes that stand out have um they're short and sweet i think um really um and really precise in in their achievements mm. but at the same time having understanding their interests outside of work that they have a bit of balance, work-life balance. So they, you know, you could see that they've got some form of, um, whether it's an activity of a sport or yoga or, or meditation of that form. So for me, that's really important that I understand that they know how to relax and unwind out of out of work. So when they come back to work, they're uh, they're focused and they're relaxed and and they're ready to go. That's a great tip because I don't think people think about those extra things about you know them as a person and how that will show up and I've worked with clients that have forgotten certain achievements that they had that weren't directly related to their jobs and when I showed them that these these are the skills that you would have gained from doing that they'll add it in there and then like just add this you know extra bit of confidence and even work experience volunteering I, you know I assume you'd probably think well that person's fairly interested in that if they're volunteering their time and that's a good sign. And then the skills that you, you gain from doing that is, is awesome too. Absolutely. So, yep. yeah. And I like the idea of like keeping a journal throughout the year because sometimes people forget what they've achieved and then it comes to pay review time and they're like, oh, I don't think I've done much. <laughs> uh, yeah, you definitely. I have that with my staff where I do half yearly reviews and they have to comment on their achievements for that first six months or even at the end of the year as well. But they come to me and, and I sort of prompt them, what about this and what about that? And they're like, oh, oh <laughs> like you remember? Yeah, lucky, you know, sometimes it's 50% of their mark that they're, for, for their increment. So that's mm. uh, important to, as you said, a journal would be fantastic. And not all managers would be so forthcoming <laughs> to remind them how well uh, they did. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so if someone's looking to um, build their confidence in their career, what would you be your th- top three tips? Um, I think for me it's about keeping up with technology, keeping up with whatever your career line that you're studied. So really understanding if there's anything new, exciting. So really keeping on educating yourself within that area of your expertise. So and and then um, if you need to go and study, go and study further if um, if that just helps. Your dog agrees. <laughs> You've given two tips about confidence, um, staying up to date with technology and then going getting edu- more education if you need it. What Correct. would be your third one? 
Um, I think um, just having just people skills and being able to communicate uh, to management. So obviously, if you want to further your career and go up the chain, um, a lot of these corporates environments, they typically see whether you know how to manage up. So it's all about then how do you communicate to management. Presentation skills is really, really important no matter who you're presenting to, whether it's total, like local within your team or management. Um, sorry, a heel That's hope. Okay. I can hear he's like, pause. <laughs> Floorboards. Um, so yeah, managing so, up and presentation. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay, now to some fun questions. What's your secret to great baking? So moistness, flavour, texture. Yeah, look, um, yeah, baking, particularly bread, I think you it's all about time and ingredients and your process. So there's three elements. So I think if, you, if you've got really good ingredients, you can't go wrong. But also at the same time, if you don't have, um, you probably can see my dog now. Hello. <laughs> what a cute. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much, if you don't have the right process, being your baking time, temperature, if you don't have a really good oven, uh, even if you had the right ingredients, it's you're not gonna get really good products. So it's all about ingredients, process, um, and passion, love that you put into into it. So it, you've got to have a lot of time when you're baking, and and uh, you can't rush it. So mm. Coda. Yeah. is it Coda? Is that the name? Oh, yeah, Coda. Yeah. Coda really agrees. He's like really intrigued yeah. by what you're saying. Little, little um, cow. He t he does a lot of taste testing. <laughs> Even when you don't want him to. Um, so yeah. your tip for people wanting to be more adventurous in the kitchen. Yep. Look, I think even if they just start um, learning basic cooking, I mean, some people don't even know their vegetables or their fruit or their, <laughs> um, their herbs. And, and uh, you know, there's so many short courses that you can do that uh, just keep teaching the basics, even just how to cut your meat, how to cook meat. Um, once you've, I think that you just got to learn the basics. And once you've done that, um, for me, it's about the learning you know, three different dishes, and then you can just swap them and swap them around. But you know, if you know how to cook chicken, meat, and fish, they're your protein. Once you've got your protein right, then everything else, you know, you throw all your veggies and salads and everything comes with it. But I, I'm, you know, learning different cultural dishes, and, and sometimes it looks like it's so hard. And, but once you've learned how to do it, it's like four, three or four steps, and you've got this amazing dish that probably took 20 minutes to prepare. So learning different dishes is really important. Um, and the simple dishes, really. Yeah, I like to watch YouTube videos because like, I'm a visual <laughs> hands-on yeah. learner. So I like to watch different ones. Yeah. Uh, and your, I guess, knowing what you know now in your life, what would you tell yourself from 10 years ago? Oh, good question. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, so 10 years ago, where was I 10 years ago? <laughs> I was definitely in a management role and um, working my way up the chain. Um, I think it was what I would say would be just stay true to who you are and and uh, things will just come your way. It's just a matter of time and just be patient and um, don't worry, don't sweat the small stuff really and things will just come your way without you even... Um, forcing it so it's just being open and, and allowing it to all happen and and, and it will just uh, without you even realizing um, you're you know pretty much my my involvement within businesses was purely that I was open to to new ideas or new roles or you know I did change a little bit of my uh, path where I was doing product development and really working for a manufacturing company that produced finished products. So um, being open and not saying no to, you know, that was all I wanted to do was product development. But, and then it, this opportunity came up and just being open to allowing new things to come through and not, yeah, just not but forcing things and just ha allowing it just to happen. Organically, yeah, it's really yeah. nice. Uh, three things you can't live without. Oh, 
food. <laughs> um, um, I definitely, I would say my family, that would be, you know, that would be my number one if I was to number them. So family, I couldn't live without my beautiful husband and my beautiful kids and my siblings and my parents, of course. You just have to include us because I'm yeah, in the call. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had a gun to my head then, but um, <laughs> no, no, definitely. I mean, I, I wouldn't be who I am without my parents and my siblings and my husband and kids. So I am I, who I am because of them. Um, and um, my, I think the last one would be my my time out, my serenity. serenity med, I do quite a bit of yoga and meditation, so that's important for me to, to be able to be to give back to the rest of my family is to have that time out for me and to be able to come back with energy and, and um, passion for them. Nice. See, I would have been surprised if you didn't mention the yoga, uh, knowing you. Your biggest form of support in your life? Yeah, look, um, right now I think it, it'll be my husband who's very positive and I think for me moving, you know, my current role, I've only been there for six months, but. I think he encouraged me to move on from my previous role where I was quite, I suppose, it wasn't healthy for me at the time, um, having, a, a, let's call it, a, a manager that was a bully and, um, you know, probably didn't really favour females as, uh, as in the workforce in a management role. So I decided I was fighting that, so I, mm. I um, decided that, you know, that I made, it was the help and, and support from my husband that gave me the courage to get up and say, no, this is not what I want and I don't deserve this and moved on. And now I'm in a, an amazing job with an amazing boss, um, awesome um, peers and direct reports. So, yeah, I think I've got my husband to thank for right now in my life. Go, Brett. Okay, so your favourite dish to cook? Oh, um, I love baking. I mean, I can cook um, different dishes, but I actually quite like baking sweets and desserts. So um, my husband likes to cook the savoury, so I, I'll tend to take on the, the sweet stuff. So anything that takes a lot of time <laughs> that uh, requires a few hours, in the, the, um, it, I find it therapeutic, to be honest. So right. making bread or, or pizza dough and, and that sort of thing. So that's my... That's my favourite. What would be your biggest concern or hope for your 18-year-old daughter, Maddie, who's entering adulthood? Yeah, look, um, that's my biggest concern, you know, having um, an 18-year-old girl and uh, in this today's environment. I think a lot of, you know, you, you hear so many stories where kids go down the wrong path and, you know, the drugs and... Um, um, you know, not coming off the, the rails. And so for me is for her to find happiness within herself first. And I think that hopefully prevents her going down the wrong path with drugs and, and alcohol and that sort of thing. So, you know, everything else will fall into place, but that's my main concern for her, that she doesn't go down that path. Fair enough. And um, what do you love most about her? What does she teach you? Uh, she's uh, she, she's a, such a strong girl that uh, very proud of her because she stands up to what she believes in and, and doesn't give in and I think I admire her her strength her passion and her uh, I think she's got a lot of courage one particular area of strength and courage that she has is that uh, a few years ago or a year ago now uh, she raised money for cancer. Uh, she went and shaved her hair off and raised 1500 from, you know, shaving her hair off. So wow. it's pretty powerful and, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do it myself. So she, I admire that, that she's so, got such courage and strength and doesn't care about anyone's opinion. She's just who she is and you've sort of got to accept who she is and if you don't, you're not, her, she's not going to be your friend. <laughs> 
And it, yeah, lucky the shades had really suit her because at that age you can be quite, you know, impressionable about what other people think, but she does not really care anyway. I admire Madeline's independence. It's great you give her that freedom to be her own person and she's, you know, becoming a beautiful young lady. Uh, your favourite mantra or quote? Oh, I've got a few <laughs> that rattle off in my head, but um, I think one is that, um, you know, probably what, there's a couple, but things that pop up right now is what goes around comes around. I think what you give out will come back. So are you giving out positivity, you know, happiness? It should, you know, that's what I'm hoping that it will come back. Um, back to me as, as that. Um, and the other thing is, is living in the now, I think that's important and not worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow and, you know, trying to um, save the world and I suppose doing what you can do right now to, to help and, and, and whatever is going on in the world or in your own home for that matter. So accepting what's happening and uh, not worrying about tomorrow. Yeah, be in the present. Namaste. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much for your golden nuggets of wisdom and the fun chat. And oh, what? It's a pleasure. Your fun. Awesome. Thanks, Heaps, Laura. Thank you. Take care.